Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Sunday, April 7th, 2024. A very happy day of the sun to you. And as a quick reminder, we've got airy season going on. We're in the Celtic tree month of Alder. We've got Mer Mercury retrograding in Aries, and we are in the midst of a waning moon. So our astrology for today, the sun, of course, is an Aries cardinal fire sign representing courage. We begin the day with the moon void, of course, then at 625 a.m. Central Time, it will enter fourth quarter Aries, again, cardinal fire, and this will represent energy. Mercury is retrograding in Aries cardinal fire, and of course, this means we need to be on the lookout for fiery tempers particularly our own. We can't control other people's tempers, but we can at least make an effort for ourselves. So just uh, be mindful. Uh, Venus is an Aries cardinal fire impulsive. We've got a lot of Aries energy going on right now. It's, it's intense. Uh, Mars, however, is in Pisces, mutable water, representing curiosity. Jupiter is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing practicality. Saturn is in Pisces, mutable water, representing nostalgia. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed earth sign, representing renovation. Neptune is in Pisces, mutable water sign, representing imagination. Pluto is in Aquarius, fixed air sign, representing reformation. And then, of course, we have the Mercury retrograde mantra, Rethink, revise, redo. And yes, we are continuing this every day until we are out of the retrograde period. So we are in a waning crescent state of the moon. So think rest, reflect, and purge. Uh, repurging uh, energies you don't need, things you don't need, just stuff that no longer belongs in your life. Get rid of it. Now, as we have the Aries moon, uh, some do's are to exercise courage, uh, work on promotion, uh, make decisions, but some don'ts are uh, to get involved with things that test your patience if you can avoid it. Don't get in the midst of attempts to do conflict resolution. This is not the, the time for it, especially with so many other freaking planets and Aries. Not a good moment to attempt it. Just leave it alone. And of course, uh, avoid the sharp objects, particularly if you are clumsy. Now, as it is the day of the sun, you might allow the light of the sun to cleanse and purify your spirit. So I sincerely hope you are getting some weather where you do see the daylight today. Uh, the sun in Aries is going to be propelling everything forward. That's just what the energy does. It's charging straight ahead to hell with the consequences. We'll deal with it later. That's just that's its vibe. Uh, so be watchful of your intentions. Don't get sloppy in your actions if you can avoid it. And again, as the moon is in Aries, uh, take the opportunity to have a good clear out. You know, use all of this aggressive, I'm going to get all the things done all at once. Use that to your advantage uh, to sort out, you know, anything in your life that, you know, has gotten untidy in some way. So today's tarot card from the Wildwood Tarot is the Blasted Oak. It represents curative destruction, not creative destruction, curative destruction. It uh, represents uh, situations that have deteriorated to the point that the only thing you can do is just to, you know, wipe it out, clean the slate, and start all over again. This is really is when something has reached the point of no return, and there's just no coming back for it, and you just have to accept it. You know, don't try to glue on the rotten branch to the tree like what we see in the card. Uh, accept that uh, that it, its time has come. The tree's time has come, and if you're wanting to have another tree, you better be prepared to plant a seed and nurture it. So some things we might want to cultivate with this kind of energy in the air is acceptance, particularly of what is. Uh, don't compare how you think things ought to be to what they are. Just say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. And how I would prefer it really is not the relevant point at the moment. I just need to accept what is and deal with it accordingly. And that also uh, requires adaptability. You know, maybe our usual approach to things just isn't really what the situation calls for. Perhaps it would even be actively detrimental. You know, we might have our hearts in the right places, but if our approach to things is not the right tool for the right job, it's, of course it's going to backfire on us. So be open to needing to change up your approach and uh, keep your vision going forward. 
past is done, past is set. There's quite literally nothing you can do about it. Once something has taken place, it has taken place. The question is, what do you do now? That's what's actually within your control. And of course, the challenge this card represents is rising up from the ashes. And that's not a fun thing to do, not an easy thing to do. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it isn't something that we shouldn't do. Uh, sometimes it is worthwhile to face the pain, face the inconvenience, face face just all of the trouble associated with everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. And, and just what can I do now? Sweep away those ashes, come back, rebuild something, rebuild something with greater wisdom this time. Now our Celtic triad for today is three things which afflict the world, envy, anger, and covetousness. So envy, as we've uh, had occasion to mention many times before with this, is just wanting what someone else has without wanting to take uh, the trouble to earn it. And yes, that does indeed afflict the world. Look at all of the really nasty, mean-spirited political movements that are going on right now. All of it is based upon envy. I want it. Someone else has it. And not only am I not going to do the things they did to get it, I'm going to complain that they shouldn't have it at all. <laughs> and and that it should just be transferred over to me because reasons. It's 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 nasty. It's hateful. Uh, then anger. This is specifically uh, not anger that is particularly righteous, or not anger that is a, a, to the proper degree. This is about blind rage. That really is the death of reason. It's the death of moderation. It's the death of being able to judge uh, to what degree to unleash uh, force or or aggression or confrontation into a situation. It's when you are no longer able to make that determination. And yes, that gets people into trouble all the time. Turn on the news. You can see all sorts of crimes that uh, were essentially, you know, conflicts between individuals or, you know, various small groups. And then they just went kablooey. And anger and blind rage has a lot to do with that. Then covetousness, a very close cousin to envy. Uh, but with covetousness, I start thinking of people who have uh, desires and ambitions that are impure in and of themselves. You know, it's not just that they want what someone else has. They want it because they want to twist it. They want to use it for unethical um intention. And it also, covetousness also has the spark of thievery. You know, you're just, you're going to steal it. You're, you're going to steal it and you expect to get the same benefits from your theft as someone did uh, from what they were earned. So this is just nasty stuff that obviously uh, we want to try to root out these tendencies in ourselves. No need bringing trouble on us. So uh, today's magical intention is support. Uh, for the color, we have yellow. Uh, the plant is a uh, chamomile because, you know, <laughs> I'm a big fan of when things go wrong. Let's have a nice cup of tea. And for many people find chamomile tea in particular calming. Uh, the animal is the goat. Uh, the crystal is calcite. Uh, and what I would suggest is focusing on building yourself up so that you're in a position to be able to provide support for people you care about and not constantly need to be the person asking for support. Uh, people... They, they get lost in the give and take. Some people, they will never ask for support no matter what because they just cannot bring themselves to be a burden upon someone else, even though their loved ones are saying, I care about you. I have a right to be involved in the worry. Please let me love you. Uh, anyone who's uh, married to a Sagittarius or a Gemini or has close friends in those signs, you know exactly the tendency I'm talking about. Strangle. Uh, but then the other thing that people tend to get wrong is if they're so comfortable with asking for support that it never occurs to them to build themselves up so they can support themselves. And they certainly never put them in some, themselves into the position of offering support to other people. It's the question of not reciprocating. And when people are not reciprocating things, not only does that really mess up the energy of a relationship, it creates a balance that it becomes unhealthy and toxic. And that creates a greater problems than if you had just, you know, built yourself up or if you had yielded and said, you know, I kind of do need a hand with this. If people would just learn to have things on a more even keel, keel and make sure that they give as much as they take, uh, that we would be in a much better position with all of our relationships. So uh, there's some homes of wisdom for you. Now for our practices today, uh, find an opportunity to give practical help to one of your loved ones today. This could be very, very simple. Uh, it could be, you know, um, 
you know, they need help opening a jar. That's one of my husband's primary uh, household functions. You know, at, at least a couple times a week, I hand him a jar and say, sweetie, can you? And of course he takes his hands and he opens the jar and, you know, it's a simple thing. It doesn't even take a minute to do, but it makes me feel cared for. It makes him feel needed. And uh, there's a lot to be said for being able to do something that's practically benefits, no matter how small that thing is, or no matter how big that thing is. It, uh, it renews the sense of connection that people have with one another. Again, it's that give and take of energies. Uh, you might also choose to uh, meditate on some of the pivot points in your life. We've got uh, quite a whammy coming up tomorrow with the eclipse. So uh, doing a little preliminary meditation uh, it would definitely be helpful. Uh, you could choose to clean one thing in your house and do a really deep, thorough clean. Just the one thing, you know, you don't need to completely wear yourself out or make sure that you don't have, you know, any rest on a Sunday. I'm not talking about that, uh, but just choosing, choosing something to give some extra tender loving care to. And the reason why I'm linking this with practice is because when we do these things, we're getting rid of stagnant energy that might've been attached to that thing. So it's all to the benefit of the household. Uh, make an offering to the land if you can. And take some time to rest. Just enjoy the spring, assuming you are getting spring uh, weather. I know some people up in the Northeast are still getting very much winter weather, and you have my profound sympathies. Uh, I, I know it's it's kind of usual for your area of the world, but I, it's got to be taxing on the nerves, you know, when you're up north or you're, you know, off to the Northeast, and when there's still got to be a lot of winter snows because that's just the weather pattern that you live in. I mean, you're waiting for the daffodils. I mean, that's got to be a bitch sometimes. So. Hopefully you're doing okay. Now, our fairy for today is the Willow Fairy. And for the journal prompt, I want you to contemplate how do weeping willows make you feel? They're my absolute favorite trees. So uh, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to this tree. And it's one of the reasons why I chose this uh, particular uh, fairy archetype to touch upon today. Uh, but if you can uh, visit a weeping willow today, spend some time under the branches and journal about the general atmosphere of the place. Uh, going through this exercise, it helps connect you to the tree and uh, it gets you into the practice of uh, sensing and you know, integrating your own energies into the energies of those things. So it's all a lot of good practice for today. And that's what I have for you. Tomorrow, of course, there will be another edition of the Daily Forecast. So I hope you'll be back for that. In the meantime, uh, share your thoughts about this one in the comments section below or send me an email at brigantiablackbird at protonmail.com and I'll chat with you there. Uh, but that will do it for today. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>